The Greg has a new bit. He's such a joker, wondering what it is. He's playing poker. Check out all these bets and bluffs that he's called in. Welcome to If you don't have a douchey poker vlog intro and aren't yourself a little bit douchey, do you even have a poker vlog? Hi and welcome to the first episode of Greg Goes All In. I am your host, Greg Liao. I am 24, I live in Toronto, I work with kids, and I like playing poker. Now some of you might be thinking, Greg, you work with kids, maybe you shouldn't be making a poker vlog. Which is fair, which is why I would like to say for the record, if you are a child, do not gamble. I do not condone children gambling. Now that we've got that out of the way, make sure you hit subscribe and like and leave a comment below of how douchey you think I am and how bad of an idea this is. It really helps the channel grow. But seriously, make sure you stick around because I've got a lot of fun content coming up, a lot of online gameplay to start with, and then once things open up and COVID be gone, lots of live game and home game coverage, which should be a lot of fun. But you're sick of long poker vlog intros and I'm sick of long poker vlog intros, so let's get right into it. We're playing $10 no limit on global poker. Let's get into some hands. Early on in the session, I pick up ace-king offsuit in middle position. There's one limper before. I say limper, no limping. I punish him. I raise the 40 cents. The limper calls anyway. And an aggressive player in the hijack calls. The flop comes 8-10-10. Big slick, really do slick big, and it checks through. The turn is a four of clubs, and it checks through as well. The river is a two of diamonds, and it checks to the aggressive player in the hijack, who now bets half pot. I'm thinking, you know what, he's an aggressive player. He might just be trying to steal the pot. I might be good with ace high. So I call. Turns out, he has a full house. Okay, fun start to the session. Next hand, we pick up 8-9 suited from the hijack. I open a little aggressively with 55 cents. Um, I think I might be kind of tilted from that full house hand. Not sure why I opened up so big. And the aggressive player, the same one, raises to $1.90. And because I'm tilted, uh, I call. <laughs> uh, the, we go to the flop heads up. It's 4, 10, 7, 2 spades, 1 club. So here I flop an open ender and a backdoor flush draw. So the aggressive player bets pot. I really don't trust him. This flop shouldn't hit his three betting range quite often. He might be sitting with ace high. And I have lots of equity with the open ender and backdoor flush. So I re-raise shove to get ace high or smaller pocket pairs to fold as a semi bluff. He snap calls with kings. I am a fish, but we bink it on the river with a six, completing our straight and we double up for a pretty big pot. So start of the session going well. Next up, I have ace jack suited in the cutoff. The hijack limps, I say limper no limping, I raise to 45 cents, and the hijack and I go to the flop, heads up. The flop is 7-5 jack with two hearts. I see bet 60 cents, planning to shove on a clean turn. I've got top pair, top kicker, pretty much gonna be good here. Uh, he's short stacked, so probably just wanna get stacks in. The turn is a queen, so I don't have top pair anymore, and he shoves about a half pot. Um, you know, I really doubt that he has a queen. He's more likely to be calling the flop with a draw or a one pair holding. So I call pretty quickly. Turns out he was betting his turned open ender, but he does not improve, and we stack him. You know, I don't like playing poker. Why do you play? I like destroying lives. Global Poker tells us an hour in that we are up 5.43 sweet coins, which kids may or may not be redeemable for real money, okay? We continue playing. And are immediately rewarded with jiggities in middle position. Folds to me, I raise the 30 cents, everyone folds, boo. Next we've got King Jack in the cutoff position. The hijack opens to 30. I call and we are heads up. Flop comes ace, ace, jack, two spades. The hijack leads out for 35 cents and I call. The turn is a good card. It's an ace giving us a boat and it also makes it less likely that our opponent also has an ace. I just have to be kind of worried about kings or queens seeing as his range is uncapped as of right now. Uh, but he checks to me and I bet a third of the pot for value and they call. The river is an offsuit 10 so the flush draw doesn't get there. Not that it matters because like Lonely Island, I'm on a boat. So when it checks to me, I bet the pot trying to get a call from a small, non-believing pocket pair. By default, and we take down the pot. So up till now, the session's been going fantastic. 
But uh, things take a really bad turn. I have Jack-9 in the hijack, open the 30 cents, small blind and big blind call. The flop is Jack-Ace-5 rainbow, and seeing as I have second pair and there's an ace on the board, I check. They, either player could easily have an ace, and they're just checking to the preflop aggressor. The turn is a 9, so now I feel a lot better with two pair. I bet two thirds of the pot, trying to get value from uh, ace holding, maybe some draws, and only the small blind calls. The river is a seven, and now the small blind leads out $2.80 over betting the pot. And I'm wondering what they're check calling two streets and then leading out with an over bet on the river. I'm thinking maybe he made some weird two pair. Uh, and the ones I beat are five, seven, which there you know, are nine combinations of left in the deck, or seven, nine, or jack, seven. But those are less likely because I blocked the nines and jacks, um, giving them six combinations of each. Maybe he has a straight like runner runner 6-8 which there are 16 combinations of. I doubt that they have a better two pair with ace something because I think they would lead out with an ace either on the flop and definitely on the turn. So to summarize, at this point I think there are 21 two pair combinations I beat and 16 straight combinations I lose to. So I think this is a good call. I call, he shows 8-10. I did not see that 8-10 straight. I am a fish. That gives him 32 combinations that beat me instead of the 16 combinations I initially thought. I'm a fish, I'm a big fish. And things get worse. Very soon after I pick up King-10 in the middle position, I open the 30 cents. The low jack calls, horseshoe and cutoff calls. Button calls, small blind calls, big blind calls, and we go six ways to the flop. Six ways. Lo gotta love micro stakes. I make top pair, okay kicker, and I have a gut shot straight draw. I bet two thirds and horseshoe and small blind call. Turn is an eight, gives us an open ender. I bet three into $5.40 and only horseshoe calls. The river is the seven of clubs. It gives us our jack high straight, but the flush draw does get there. Um, and I am absolutely worried that he has the flush. I bet small to get value from two pair or set holdings with plans to fold if he raises. If he raises, I'm definitely going to fold. Bet fold is the right thing to do here. He raises, and I think, nah, he doesn't have the flush. Like an idiot, and so I call, and of course he has the flush. He's not gonna re-raise. On. He's not gonna re-raise with worse, and he's not gonna bluff in such a connected board. Ay ay ay. But that's okay. I'm Greg goes all in. We can turn this around. We pick up pocket queens and everyone folds. But that's okay because we pick up pocket jacks and everyone folds. Towards the end of my session, I'm very tilted. So I overbet shove an open ender with a hand I should never have been playing anyway. I get snapped by Ace King, top pair, top kicker. We don't improve, and just like that, our stack is gone. First episode of Greg Goes All In, we were in for $22.13, out for Zilch, giving us a profit of minus $22.13. Not the ideal start I would have wanted for this vlog, but you know, I think it's better to set expectations low to start off with. Hopefully, next time will be better. I'm Greg, always play 7 Deuce, and I'll catch you next time. Greg.